Good evening. Welcome to the Diablo 3 podcast. We are online at DiabloII.net. I'm your host, Flux. I'm joining the show tonight by Dave Gregory. What is your online name? Brave Sir Dave. That's, that's better than your, uh, your Skype name. Well, yeah, my Skype name is my real name. Uh, that's disturbing. Okay, so we were going to... Uh, so is mine, actually. My parents named me Flux. <clears throat> so we are going to talk about some stuff coming up in the new Season 5. is starting uh, just, what, four days from now? Three days from now, even. The season is coming up Friday night. Have you done last seasons? Have you ever done, you know, played nine hours straight once the season starts up? Uh, you know, or 40 hours over the weekend? And are you going to do that this weekend? No, I play for like probably five or six hours the night it comes out. And then, um, yeah, pretty much full time during the weekend. Yeah. So I don't know. I guess I put maybe 20 hours during the first weekend. So do you have a goal? Are you trying to hit like Paragon 500 the first weekend or? No. Greater if greater 70, what is your goal? No. Push higher. My goal is getting two uh, new tabs of stash. That's my goal. Of course, you'll have you know, lots of tabs of stash at that point since you won't have anything to put in, <laughs> put in it yet after when you're only Paragon 100, right? Right, but uh, yeah, I don't know. We, we, let's talk about that. So uh, what are your plans for the new season? I haven't been able to play the first day of a season since, since I think season one. I always have to work Saturday, Sunday, and I'm working Saturday and Sunday again this week, so that's always the case. Mm-hmm. But I'm not working Friday night for once or Friday, so unless something comes up, I'm actually going to play, dive in on the season and start off fresh and get, get in there with everybody else in our hardcore clan, nice. assuming anybody is still alive in our hardcore clan. It's been a long time since I've had a chance to log on and play video games. Mm. But I'm actually kind of excited because I haven't done any PTR, and I really haven't played any video games for more than like half an hour at a time since like August. So okay. it, it sucks being an adult, you know? <laughs> but so like, if you, you like, can put in the time, like what, what would be your goals? Well, since I have to work all day Saturday and Sunday, and then Sunday night I'll be recording a podcast, editing that, and going to bed except I work Monday, it's kind of pointless to get too excited. But I'm just looking forward to actually doing the initial rush and getting to 70. Yeah. Hopefully, I can get to 70 when I'm still a little bit conscious, because you know, it really only gets fun once you get to max level, right? Yes. Then you can finally start doing... Of course, you can, you can do you know, Nephilim riffs and stuff before you're max level in, in now. You don't have to find keys or anything anymore. Yeah. So you can get in there a lot, lot quicker than it used to be, but you know, that's when you really want to start pushing, and you want to get to T1 so you can start getting some green stuff. Mm-hmm. But it may be a little different this time because of the, um, the seasonal journey now, because you know, they call it Hadrig's Gift where he gives you pieces of, of one of the item sets for your class as you complete the seasonal journey pages. Right. And by the time you finish the fourth page, you will have gotten all six pieces of what, what, you know, one set, pre, one preset, one set preset per class. And I don't recall exactly how seasonal journey breaks down, but you get at least to page three or four just getting to level 70. Right, so you presumably have found those items by then. Yeah, so in third, by the time you're 70, you'll have... I hope they give them to you level 70. Weird, I mean, because you finish the first page of that like at level 30. Is he going to give you a set item that's a level 70 set item when you're level 30? Or do you get, like, five of them when you finish page three and then one when you finish page four? I don't know. Mm. I guess if, if, anyone, if I had been playing on the PTR like a proper podcast host, I would know the answer to these questions. I but. thought you didn't get them one at a time. I thought you got them all of them at once after you've done, like, page whatever it is of the season journey. But you, you may be right. I, I don't. Well, the way it's worded in the preview from Blizzard... We've introduced Hadrig's Gift, a special bundle of set items you'll, you'll, you'll receive on completion of certain stages of the season journey. Should you complete the first four chapters, you'll be guaranteed a full set of one of your six-piece sets. So it sounds like you get them along the way, but you know, obviously if you can't wear it until level 70, what's the point, yeah. right? So Yeah, that would, be, that would be weird, giving you something you can't use. But at any rate, it does sound like you know, by the time you hit level 70 or not long after, you will have a full six-piece set, where ordinarily... You know, you would get to level 70, and then you got to struggle for a while to get to T1, especially yeah. if you're playing hardcore, where it actually matters if you die. Right. And then you can only, only then do you start grinding for your set. And what, what I always get, you know, in previous seasons is, you know, I end up with like 5, 5, 4, 5 of the sets. And it's like, can I just get goddamn one more piece of anything? Can, why can't I get like six zero zero one right? Because any 6-piece set, as soon as you put it on, you're vastly increased in your performance. Yeah. But it's always, I always end up being like, like RNG just is perfectly random, and I get, you know... I'll find seven bracers, and it's like, okay, seven gloves, and it's like, why can't I just find, can I just get 
two hats in a row and be finished here? Yeah, but no, no. like the cool whatever recipe should help, not right? Unless you have yeah, but you gotta you still gotta get up to a torment, and then you gotta find the stuff, yeah. and then you gotta find extras. So yeah, yeah, once you get to like four, you can convert, you know, and yeah. start trying to get the fifth and the sixth. And also, there's always the challenge at the start of the season. You don't have a, a ring of royal grandeur either, so you gotta actually get the whole six right. piece thing. Now here is because here's here's what's running cash. Yeah, yeah, running cash is sucks is when you're on low difficulty because you don't get enough rewards. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. What I'm worrying about is that there's a greater number of, of items, legendary items and set items than ever before. And so but they as far as we know, they haven't increased the, the drop rate, you know, except in the PTR for testing purposes. And so I I'm kinda worried about how long it's gonna take to uh get a set. Uh, and then well, you'll have five, 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 five for like <laughs> for like like Paragon 270. You'll still be sitting there finding your 17th pair of gloves. Right. You don't need. So that's a lot of uh, uh, stash space used up right there, especially if you want to do like all the uh, the dungeon master things. The set dungeons. The set dungeons, right? So I, well, I, those I, my whole point for the last ten minutes has been. Two tab, two extra tabs is not that much. No, but you need to move to China if you want more. So <laughs> just accept it. True. I yeah. I don't know. I'm good. I don't need them that badly, but I'm, I'm just saying it's. Uh, yeah, I keep I keep seeing forum posts and comments from people who still think they're getting ten tabs immediately this season, and it's like, no, you get one more tab this season. Yeah. And then I think you I think you can you immediately can just buy one when you're you know just like normal maybe another five hundred k gold right. or whatever. And then you'll get one more for finishing the whole season journey or something like that. Uh, I hope it's. Oh, I hope so. it's not the last chapter. I don't want to label a hardcore character. That's. But then, but then each season for the next three seasons, you'll get one more. So you can get a max of seven in this season, and then eight, and then nine, and then ten. So right. it's gonna be like a year before you have ten tabs. Mm-hmm. And if you don't earn them in each season, you don't get to the next season, right? So if you skip two seasons, you don't automatically jump from six to nine. You jump from six to seven. So you've got to put in the time each season to get the, to earn each tab. Otherwise, you'll just you won't get the new tab. So, as it said Suffer. that, like, is is there going to be a uh, a backup for like players who like new players, players who start playing for season six or something? Or they really don't need the tabs. They don't have any gear yet. So screw them. <laughs> No, they've just said you have to play each. This this all might have been changed in the fine print, but I haven't noticed it in recent months and weeks. Mm-hmm. But. Initially, they did say you can only get one additional tab each season, and that would sort of everyone have a different total. So your friend might have nine, you might have seven, or whatever. Hmm. But you got to play enough. I don't think it's going to be like you know some super super hard thing to get it, but yeah, you don't need to do anything. You know, you're not going to do like solo gr80 naked to get your extra sash tab, right? No, I hope not. But I I still hope there's a there's a way for uh, players to uh, get those. Down the road, maybe they're just you know maybe you're maxed out and then you don't get new ones. But if you don't have the nine or the ten, and in the subsequent seasons, then you you earn them. Maybe that's what they're doing. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, it'll be it'll be a new way to do it, and it involves a credit card. That's how you learn, <laughs> additionally, they said they weren't going to do that. Yeah, well, they they, they should because everyone wants it. So, um, other than that, one of the other new features you mentioned the uh, set dungeons. And uh, there are 24 set dungeons, four for each class, corresponding to the four six-piece class set items, set uh, item sets. And they're, they're, they're non-random, they're pre-designed, and we've had a lot of discussion about these on recent podcasts with some people who actually have been testing them. Nerdword was going on and on about some of the uh, wizard ones, because he's the wizard man. Mm-hmm. But it is curious to try them, because they, are not, they don't scale with difficulty. They're kind of set at a, at a certain difficulty level, and some of them are actually harder if you're too well-geared. Like, you'll kill the stuff too quickly to get your buffs up properly and such. Mm, yeah. Uh, but they, they they sound like they're not meant to be, like, super long-term end-game goals. They're kind of just sort of, like, fun bonuses. Like, you get the new set, and then you have, to, you have to play with the set properly in order to finish it because they have these requirements. You have to kill all the elites using the special skill of your set, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then you get the bonus. They're almost like tutorials. Like, they're a little bit like seasonal journeys. Like It's like a seasonal journey walkthrough kind of thing. Like, the seasonal journey, you know, teaches you to do the game right, you know, go spend blood shards and earn, earn this right. bonus, you know, or go, go, go to a greater rift and you'll earn this, or Craft. if you had a legendary gem and you'll earn this. Craft something. So it seems like the set dungeons are kind of in the same way. It's like, this is to encourage you to try a set you haven't tried before, and you can get some special bonus buffs. 
And so, uh, Dave, do you play? Are you going to play all six classes and all four set dungeons because you want every last little appearance buff, or do you care about that kind of thing? Uh, you know, I thought I cared this season, and then turns out I didn't. So who knows? It's I'm looking at it right now, like yeah, this is pretty tempting. Uh, those wings look pretty cool, uh, but I just like this looks like so much of a commitment. Like seriously, like all the grinding just to get all of the pieces of a set just to do that dungeon. Uh, and then like, like you said, like by that point, like what your Paragon 800, so it's too much. I don't know. You don't, you don't put in your Paragon points or something. I don't know. And that, well, you would just, you would just wear like a lesser quality of your jewelry or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I've watched, um, a couple of, I don't know if you saw Queen 69. He has like, he actually made a video, a how to on every single dungeon. Uh, and I wish a couple of them randomly just to see what it looks like. And some of them are way harder than others. Like, for example, for the reason you mentioned. And so I'm like, I don't, I don't want to play against the game. Like, I, like the rifts, you know, the rifts are at a pretty good place right now. Like, it's a pretty good end game. It's a fun end game. But that sounds like, I don't know. It was the design might not be everything that it needs to be. I don't know. It didn't look like fun, I guess, is what I'm saying. Well, you want your video games to be fun, too, <laughs> not just a time sink? <laughs> oh, I, I do want my cake, and I want to eat it, too. That's correct. Do you want icing on your cake that you're eating it, too? Oh, we all know that icing is... Uh, I mean, cake is just a delivery mechanism for icing, so yes. Yeah, so I haven't done any set dungeons yet. I am curious. I do like that they have a green portal. It's like it's kind of shiny. It's like, ooh, mm-hmm. green portal. But it does seem like as soon as you get your six-piece set and start playing, you're going to be like, you know, obviously if you've played... I, I can see that being a little bit of encouragement. I mean, I've mostly played a Demon Hunter since... I've played a lot of Monk and a lot of Barbarian also in, in Vanilla and then early in D2X. But the last couple of seasons, I've played pretty much only Demon Hunter. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to go like play a Witch Doctor just because I want to do a set dungeon, but it does seem like it's kind of a cool thing to encourage you to to do different sets and to not just do the one set that you can possibly... you know. There's always like one set that's the super best build, right? And that's, that's what everyone ends up playing. And it's like, any other set, you're going to be five greater rifts lower, and it's just, what's the point? <laughs> but now there is a little bit of a point, you know? It's like, oh, this is kind of fun. You get a little bonus thing for it, and yeah. you get the check mark. Yeah. For sure. I kind of, I guess, I never really cared much about achievements in, um, like, in Diablo Three Vanilla or other Blizzard games. I've never been much of an achievement collector, because either they are like, you know, trip over a rock achievements. They're so easy, or else it's like find every lore book yeah. in like a thousand square acre radius, and you'll spend six hours to do it. And it's like, I don't, I don't care about ones that are that easy, and I don't, I don't care enough to look for the ones that are super, super hard. Right. When it's not like a skill-based hard, it's just like a random exploration hoping for the best. Right. It's like you finally happen to have randomly gotten a champion of every kind of monster in the game. Cha-ching! It's like, well, I didn't you know, try to get this. Right. Just, you know, I'm not controlling the RNG of the monsters, right? right? So the season, but the seasonal journey yeah. achievements are a little more like, here's what you should be doing. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of, an, you know, if you're playing smart and intelligent and doing the right things, you will get these. Right, exactly. So I, I do find that more appealing in some way. Yeah, but uh, again, like the, there's some weird stuff thrown in there. Like the, I guess the hardcore uh, character creation is like the, the biggest one in my mind because again, like if I, there's a, there's very little overlap between hardcore and softcore players for the most part. I think so. It's kind of like forcing you to do something else, but that, it's it's not fun. Like if I'm gonna go ahead and do it, I, I'm gonna feel like I'm forced into doing it. Like, I'm not, it's not just to get the, whatever, cosmetic reward. But other than that, yeah, up and until they like, have, the latest difficulties, I think they're, they're pretty good. Should they have achievements that force you to play softcore just to get those achievements? Like, you have to die ten times in five minutes to <laughs> Diablo, otherwise you can't get it? Because I only play hardcore, so it doesn't matter to me, because I get the same, I don't have to do anything out of the way. You know? Right, so the the one on the last page, like, you get, like, really early up, right? Well, if I'm only playing hardcore, then yes, I, right. I get them pretty early up, but... Yeah. But anyway, to to come back to the uh, to the set dungeons, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Like, I'm, I'm going to go back to playing a Demon Hunter. Uh, it's, it's really one of my favorite characters, and 
all of the play styles that I like, like the um, all of the the main th- the main sets, like the Marauder and uh, another the Essence and the uh, what's the Natalia. Yeah, and the Natalia. I love all those play styles, and they've all been you know changed, overhauled to some extent. So I'm really looking forward to that, and I'm going to do the associated dungeons for sure. Yeah, but. I mean, I don't know. When I focus on like one playstyle, like it, it, I'm not a great, super great player. Like I, I suck at games, and so it takes me a while to get my stride. You know, uh, even with like a playstyle that I want to focus on. So I'm not sure about like how many, twenty four of them. That's yeah. There's four per class. Right. So. Yeah, that's a lot of playing time that I'm not sure I have. Yeah, I, I will, there's no chance in the world I'll do all of them, but I've, I've kept... The last couple of seasons, when I was having a little more playtime, I was mostly doing Demon Hunters, because I was kind of trying to push to higher levels. Mm-hmm. But then I kept thinking, yeah, I, w- I would like to do something different. And But then there was always, like, major bugs, or, you know, the whole last season, which Doctors were, like, unplayable, because there was mm-hmm. huge lag. And it's like, it seems like they've gotten most of that stuff straightened out now, and there's a lot of different viable builds for every class. Yeah. It's not like Crusaders are, like, ten greater risk than everybody else anymore, so... Yeah. It does seem like you're not you're not sort of dooming yourself to second class citizenry by playing some class you don't know that super well. But. Right. Also, if you look at like uh, the polls, like what what are people going to play or say they're going to play in season five, there's still a pretty good correlation between that and like the maximum greater rift level that was achieved, you know, in the PTR. Demon Hunter or Wizards, I think, are the top two, if I remember right, and that's what people say they're going to play, you know, so they still kind of look at that too, I think. Well, last season it was entirely monks and barbarians, mm-hmm. so everyone kind of great, everyone kind of gravitates toward the classes that are the most powerful based on whatever new build people find, mm-hmm. and I'm sure that we don't know what the best builds are yet for the new patch, I mean, people haven't done enough testing on the PTR, stuff comes out a month or two into the season, people find some new build that's totally awesome and start using that instead, and suddenly everybody, everybody you see is playing that class, so... yeah. I'm sure that will repeat. Yeah. What do you think of empowered rifts, where they are essentially a greater rift, but you can spend a bunch of gold when you enter it, and that if you finish it in, in under 15 minutes, it gives you a chance to do a fourth upgrade for legendary gems instead of just three? Yeah. It's obviously it's just a pure straight out gold sink. Right, which is what we all wanted, so we we go on. Uh, but I I don't know how well it scales. Like I haven't heard people talk about it very much. So I hope that like you can keep up and that you don't have to have like a gold farming uh, build, you know, because there's already like you need at least two builds usually. So I hope like that doesn't add. I guess you don't have to do it. So technically, you know, nobody's forcing you to do anything. But uh, if I can get a fourth chance at uh, incre- uh, leveling up my gems, please, yes, uh, absolutely. Well, I mean, gold has been wildly over common in the last couple of seasons. Mm-hmm. And what you can do, like, once even I remember back when it was only up to T six, and you could get a lot of gold. And then once there was T ten, and you could get, you could like, you know, you find a treasure goblin, right. and you could go to, you know, the ones that open up portals to Greed's Rift all the time. And right. now you can actually, you know, every puzzle ring you can just turn it yeah. into another a free portal. That's like that's like 150 million gold if you do that on T10. Right. You know, it's just, and you find one of those every third game. It seems like sometimes, so it's just kind of crazy how much gold people can get. So it, yeah. I, I think it'll become empowered rifts will just become like the new minimum. You know, everyone will just assume you're doing them all the time. Mm-hmm. Once you're, you know, once you're a few weeks or a month into the season and you're a billionaire. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it, and it's a good. Um, it's a good synergy with like the new recipe you know, that lets you consume uh, those gems to um, give you bonuses on your ancient items or something. Um, I don't remember what the recipe is called, but yeah, basically you want, you're going to want to level up your gems so that you can um, use them in that recipe. So they, it's kind of nice the way they, uh, they put in those new um, uh, gameplay systems that, you know, play off of one another. Yeah, and it, it's always kind of one of the complaints about a lot of the features in the game is that everything seems to be like the rich get richer. Like, the more you play, the more stuff you get, the more resources you have, the more you can leverage. And it's like, well, yeah, of course, at one level. But yes. 
at the other level, it's like people who used to have, you know, they have, they have 10 times the playtime you do, they could, they could level up so much faster. Now they get another a 33% bonus in legendary gym upgrade rate thanks right. to this bonus, which you can't afford to do because you don't play them off. And it's like, mm-hmm. you know, you just got to kind of accept. It's just the game is set up to, to reward people who play it a lot. And some, there's some RNG. Obviously, you can get lucky and find something before you've played a million hours. Mm. Or perhaps not. Perhaps the exact opposite. No, I, I think the game is designed, or at, at least they're probably trying to design it for people in the middle. You know, they probably have numbers of how many hours per week the average player puts in. And then hopefully they, they design the features around, you know, um, that that average, that middle of the road. I, I would hope. But clearly, yeah, the top 1% is going to... Yeah, those yeah, they're definitely going to benefit more than the rest of us for sure. Well, pretty much every game post release, every RPG certainly, almost all the the new features are just for the end game. Yeah, you know, like, like that one World of Warcraft patch in Cataclysm, where you know, the, in the one uh, expansion pack where they like reworked all the lower level areas to make it more fun to level. Everyone's like, we hate this. Why did you use <laughs> the worst patch ever? Waste of time. <laughs> And of course, now the newest you know World of Warcraft expansions come with instant max level buttons. You just click a button, and your character's max level. So obviously, they they didn't exactly stick to that plan of making it all fun to level up. Yeah, why don't we have that? Why don't we start at uh, seventy, please? Because people need something to do the Friday night when the season goes live. Yeah, we discussed that on past podcasts. <laughs> like a month into the season, why don't they just make a button to be instant level seventy then? Right. Like, okay, the seasonal rush is fun. The first couple of weeks, you want to catch up and play with your friends. And after that, people just want to be level 70 to start. So why don't you just make a, make a button? Because then everyone would wait those two weeks and not play a character. I, I don't know. I don't think I think people who get to level 70 in four hours don't give a shit. So. Yeah, I guess. I just found a, uh, a spreadsheet on how to min max your uh, path to 70. So maybe I'll use that and only spend four hours with the pros. Who knows? It may be a little bit different. I guess not. It won't matter much this time. But one of the other big fixes in the patch is that they've greatly reduced the uh, disparity between the experience you gain playing in a, in a group and playing solo. So that's been a big topic on the podcast. Mm-hmm. And people, uh, you know, it was something like 35 to 50 times more experience in a, in a four-player game when, when everybody had all of the plus experience gear oh, and you were doing high-level greater rifts. And now it's supposed to be like three to five times from what I've read, <laughs> read in some forum posts. And so I, I saw it in a, in a forum post by a random guy on the internet, so I'm sure it's totally mm-hmm. accurate. Sounds much like, much like that's how I do medical diagnoses as well, so it's all working out pretty well. And apparently, I have I have ovarian cancer also <laughs> so, in related news. But if, you know, that's been a big topic forever. You know, the last couple of seasons, that's been people bitch about botting, but of course, you know, no one's getting to be Paragon 2500 by botting. I mean, maybe the botting helps them to get all the materials and keys they need so that when they're actually right. playing, they can instantly just do the massive experience gain, yeah. you know, Greater Rift stuff. But the real experience was all from people doing endless hours of Greater Rift, so... Yeah. In four-player parties. And now it's a much less of that. And that doesn't help you on the way to 70, obviously, because you can't do a Greater Rift until you're level 70. But yeah. it may be, may be a little difference in terms of how fast people are getting the massive, uh, you know, super high Paragon levels and make people who want to play solo have a little more fun. Yeah, I, I've I've gone back and forth on solo versus group, like the, the circling back to like budding and and season four. It, it I used to say, oh, I don't care because budding doesn't affect me directly. Whatever, I'm not competing for the leaderboards. I don't I don't care. But as I was falling behind in terms of experience, like I found it harder and harder to get a public match going. Uh, and I never found clans to be super reliable, you know, to find other players. Uh, and so that that has kind of affected me, you know, in in that way. And that everybody was just leaving, like, am I the only one who doesn't bot anymore? I, I guess, maybe, but uh, I'm level 1200, I'm not going to play with you, you know, 750, whatever. Um, and there was it, it, it was getting harder and harder, and that's that's one of the reasons that I, I stopped playing a couple of months ago. Couldn't find any good any public games. Well, obviously that's a good reason to be in a clan, and certainly early in the season yeah. you have less of that issue. But over time, people do get pretty high mm-hmm. up. Yeah, I have a group of friends uh, that gets together at the beginning of each season, so at least I have like that 
uh, logged in for at least the first few hours of the season, so it's, that's pretty helpful. Yeah, cool. One other um, brief mention, they, legendary items, there's over 40 new ones. Of course, nobody cares about legendary items unless they're the ones that synergize with a set perfectly, otherwise mm-hmm. who cares? But right? they need to be ancient, so, for that. But that may be, there may be a little more of that, thinks we've got the, um, the uh, Nightmares ring set now that actually does that whole trick with not wearing other set items, but... But just in general, in general terms of legendary items, there are 40 new ones and no more seasonal legendaries. I'd forgotten that until I noticed mm-hmm. it, you know, researching the podcast here. There, of course, the only thing seasonal now are stash tabs. I guess so that's a, that's kind of a legendary. That's but, the only thing, yeah. But I, I yeah. there were there were you know bitter debates months and months ago about people saying there shouldn't be seasonal legendaries. I want them now. Why are you making me wait? Like when the Unhallowed Essence set came out, you know, and the quiver yeah. for that was, you know, the Dead Man's Legacy quiver was made the set so much better, and this and that quiver was seasonal yep. item. So people in non-seasonal were like, "Why does my Demon Hunter suck for the next four months until mm-hmm. the season finally ends?" This, this is wrong, and I guess I guess I can kind of see the point. I was only playing seasonal, so I didn't really care. You know, it didn't affect right. me that much, but and you know, it was kind of fun to have to have items that I was only getting in a season. And obviously, that was Diablo too. There were lots of seasonal legendaries and <laughs> seasonal room words. That's my dog. And seasonal <laughs> dogs. Did you have a full moon there? Did you just transform? <laughs> Who knows what he's seen. Probably nothing. Now, what do you care about seasonal legendaries? You're playing seasonal, so I guess you don't mind, but did you feel it was unfair that they were not there, or do you wish we still had special perks for seasonal Yeah, players? I think it's great that everybody's getting all that stuff at the same time, because I, I didn't always play seasons, and I was... I don't remember if it was specific specifically for that set, uh, but I remember looking at the seasonal players, and I was like, oh man, I wish I, wish I had that right now, but... Then I started playing seasons uh, pretty much exclusively, so it didn't matter anymore. But I'm I'm glad, yeah, everybody's getting all this stuff at the same time. Like that's, it seems a little weird that uh, not punishing, but you know, almost. Will you be doing a seasonal rebirth and rolling one of your existing characters back to yeah. level one so you can play that character in the season? I, I don't know. I don't I don't care that much. Do you have like an emotional no. attachment to your existing no, characters? I do not. So. Probably not. I, 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 I've. Do you know the name of your main character? Do you remember? I think my monk is Baldi. That's and the, oh yeah, I'm named my barbarian. I see in Crusher. That's very original and, and funny name. Better than at least it wasn't Kevin <laughs> V. Right. That's exactly. my evil barbarian name. But what I was getting at is that so I've logged into a game like a few days ago just to see the the results of the season merge, right? See how much gold I had and paragon levels and whatnot. And I started s- sorting out my my stash and trying to merge my inventory and I just like I don't I I don't even care. I'm just gonna wait till Friday and what's what's the point anyway? Unless I was gonna play for those three days, which, you know, as I've already said, I can, I'm probably not going to do so. Why do I care? I would. Um, I wish I'd done a vote or a, a, a survey on that somehow mm-hmm. to measure if people who played softcore or versus hardcore cared more or less about seasonal rebirth. Because in hardcore, obviously you've you've rebirthed a lot, you know, not on purpose. Right. So most hardcore players, their their characters have Roman numerals after their names. So you just kind of remake the same one, or you you count the number up higher, right. or. You give it a new name each season, just some you know some stupid default name because they're going to die right. anyway probably, or you'll need to retire them after a season. But now they've changed the game, so you can keep your same character forever. You can play mm-hmm. all season and then have them you know rebirth them and then theoretically. Play. So maybe, maybe people will start coming up with like better character names now, you know, or like you can get a little more RPG going or something because this character is not going to have to be retired and, and rendered obsolete when the sure. season ends. Yeah, good point. Okay, probably not, but it's fun to pretend, right? I, yeah, I don't know. It's so easy to. I guess some people care about, like, they don't necessarily care about the, the name or anything, but the argument I've heard is number of hours played on the character, which is something that personally so. I, I would not want to know, uh, because it, it's just like, you've spent that many hours of your life playing Diablo 3, and it's just this one, this one character. I don't need to know that personally, but hey, whatever. Everyone needs to know that. They can look on your battle and account and find out. What's your what's your uh, battle tag? Can I go look right now? Uh, that's a good question. I'm kidding. Don't tell us. It's like seeing you naked at home. No, no one's that. No one. 
I, but I, I know I have hundreds and hundreds of hours in Diablo 3 already. I don't need to know exactly how many hundreds. At the same time, that was kind of cool to look at in the past, especially in hardcore where characters die. You know, you feel like, oh, I played this character for 300 hours, they're not dead yet mm-hmm. or something, you know, just is a hypothetical right. number. And that could be like, okay, that's how much I've played this character this season. You could like, you could like use it to check your own stats, mm-hmm. kind of. And if you just roll the character over, you'll just, you know, you'll you'll lose that ability. It'll just be a blur. How much they played? Of course, it's already it's already a blur, right. right? But I mean, you're saying like if if your one hardcore character doesn't die and you you keep rebirthing him or her into the new season, I guess that could be a cool thing. Like in three four seasons from now, someone's like, look, I played two thousand hours on this hardcore character. They, I've, I rebirthed them four straight seasons and never died. That'd be kind of That's impressive, a right? Pretty big. Uh Pretty big bragging rights, yeah, right there. Like, look at, yeah. Well, for me, that'll be it. I mean, they, I was, I always thought that they should have that in seasonal or something. Like, you know, you would get a bonus for the longer you played the same hardcore character without ever mm-hmm. dying. You know, if you kept them going for a certain amount of time, they would get like a, a new, you know, appearance icon or mm-hmm. something. Five hundred hours of survival. You know, you get little gold wings or something like that. Yeah. I guess that would be that would really make software players even more pissed off than usual. So. <laughs> I, th- I think we should be shamed when when we die. Like have the well, you're shamed just by playing softcore, so there's, there's no additional shame. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we need to put some more. Like number of death, you know, appears in bright letters, and it appears to everyone in the party too, so everyone knows. Yeah, that'd be cool if it was on the, it was on the ladder, <laughs> right? Like next year, greater risk score. Number of death is like it would divide it. Oh my God. <laughs> like old video games. Remember, remember the old like, like Gauntlet arcade games yeah. and stuff. They would divide your score by how many coins you'd put in. Because every time you put another token in, you would get to the 1,000 uh-huh. health or whatever. So eventually you'd have 100,000 points, but if you put in four tokens, your high score would only go as 25,000. Wow. So like, it'd be nice if it like, divided greater risk by the number of deaths you've done. Like every 100 deaths, you, you get like a you know, 10% reduction in your right. GR. Every software player is like smashing their computer have you, right now. Have you played Path of Exile? Uh, not since the alpha. Okay, because I, well, I don't know if... So no, effectively okay. no. I've not so even if you play softcore in Path of Exile, uh, there's like three difficulty levels, and in the two highest difficulty levels, you lose experience when you die, even in softcore. So there's actually, it's I think it's a pretty good compromise, like design-wise, like where it, you really do have the incentive not to uh, uh, not to play too too dumb because those experience points are you know hard to get. At the highest levels, uh, and so it's a pretty good punishment, yeah, well, I think. Yes. Well, Diablo three has no ins- has no punishments for playing dumb. So as we've long seen, there's still the timeout, which is really infuriating. Oh, I, yeah. But well, I mean, it's, it just means you fail the challenge. <sighs> to me, that's even worse than losing experience points. Actually, it's like losing experience points. Like I feel like can you care? Oh, you deserved it here, but here's like timeout. You, uh, no, don't like it. But anyway. I'm not gonna be hardcore. Well, you get no icing on your cake. You get no icing on your cake, then, man. Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna try. Have you played the um, the Xbox version or the PS4 version and seen the the much better kill streaks and destruction bonuses and yes. all that kind of stuff? Those are. Super- and are you excited? Those are coming to the PC yes, version now. Actually, those are more fun than people thing they are you you're really when you get a street a street going you try to you know keep going and uh, like you hope that the density is there for you and you just like 100 200 it's it's super fun love it yeah it seemed like a gimmick and i remember playing that oh, at, at blizzcon yeah. you know like like a year ago and two years ago at blizzcon you, you play the ps4 version or something and it's like wow this is kind of yeah. fun you know like it's it's like it's it's this it's total sensory mm-hmm. indulgence it's like there's 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 more numbers popping and there's big explosions and sparks mm-hmm. and and things and there's a counter saying how many you've killed right. and you're like okay i feel kind of like i feel almost guilty for being so easily <laughs> manipulated by this sensory input and yet shiny yeah but it does also give you some bonuses right you get like some extra XP uh, or whatever, some extra speed if you break stuff. Like I don't remember exactly the uh, the specifics, but yeah, there's profit involved. It's, it's not purely a cosmetic right. visual. You, you do get a little a little boost of some kind or another for for doing it too. But again, I, I think it's great. It's awesome. More yep. shiny. And the and the console players are not getting a season, so you know. Well, that's because they're all dirty hackers. <laughs> so what can they do? <laughs> Yeah, I gained a uh, hundred levels one day just by uh, logging into a public game 
I went from like 400 to 500 in one rift. Well, that must have come uh, It was like watching a car accident. It's like, I, I could log out, but it's kind of like, you see your park and they all go bling, bling, bling. It's, I don't know. I never logged in again to a public game ever again on a console, but that was fun that one time. Did they give you gear that was better than everything you had on immediately and it was all hacked and like had six, 17 sockets? No, no. I was pretty disappointed too. Like it was a uh, Greater Rift level I don't know, 95, 90, 95, whatever it was. And I got only like 10 legendaries drop at the end. Like it's like, that's, that seems pretty. Well, you got a hundred Paragon I levels, so you know, at least you got something. <laughs> Again, like I want, I want both. And you get to actually keep those. <laughs> yeah. So massacre bonuses now, as mm-hmm. you kill them, 15 or more enemies, you get bonuses. Com- gives you a bonus to experience gained for some duration of time after the massacre bonus. And the more monsters you kill in the massacre, the higher the mm. bonus. The destruction bonuses get you a temporary bonus to speed that will last longer the higher your chain reaction of destruction bonuses. So you can, you know, obviously, the faster you move, the more you can destruct, and the more you dis- destruct, mm-hmm. the faster you can move. And the other one is trap bonuses. So the more stuff you, the more enemies you kill through, you know, environmental traps, knocking over walls and stuff, it gives you double resource gen- regeneration for... Oh, I didn't know about that one. That's... So they are they are actively useful right. things. So if you knock a wall on some zombies and you got double exp, you know, double resource for you know That's ten seconds, awesome. it's actually right. a thing. So you can do it on purpose, I, not just. I'm not sure that one comes from the console because I don't remember that that one. I remember the xp one and the speed one, but I definitely don't remember the resource one. So I'm. I think okay. it's, yeah, it's one of the newer ones they decided. Okay. To and the other, and it's just they're just really fun mm-hmm. visually with all the explosions and flashing stars and numbers yeah. and like big counters appearing on the screen. Yeah. And everything. I imagine imagine putting that like in Diablo One, like there's, you know these old like these old style RPGs that had like no health bars on monsters and no number <laughs> pop ups, like you had a little flash of light when you got a critical hit, and it was like it was all like you know yeah. serious business. But uh, and now everything's like a right, slot machine. Like that's, you know, that's that's a, I think we have a problem at the other end. It's like. Right now, when you're playing Diablo 3, it's like a 4th of July on every screen. And it's it can get really hard to tell what's what. It, it looks pretty, as you said. Like, ooh, shiny. It's awesome. We should say New Year's <laughs> Eve for our New Year's Eve. List. Yes. Fireworks. Fireworks, basically. Fireworks. Mm-hmm. Explosions. So, yeah. so, I think that's it for all the new features coming up. Oh, I guess the... Um, the other one of the there's a lot of little quality of life things. One of which we finally get a big improvement to uh, belt interface, where the, you know the buffs that are showing are going to be the, the ones you're actually using and valuing. Yeah. It's not going to just show every aura in the game if you've got you know an Indian set wearing a monk in mm-hmm. your in your party, right? They're going to show the useful stuff, and it actually shows you what you want and keeps track of yes. things. And the stuff that's on a five second counter you actually need to keep track of will be visible and not just be, you know, and not just when you don't have any shrine bonuses. Yeah. Also, that kind that's, of thing. That's that's good. Thumbs up. Lots of other uh, QOL yeah. stuff, which we like. Much of which everyone tends to forget about. Like, you get used to using it on the PTR, and you, I haven't PTR tested much this time, but in, pre- in previous patches, I would do, m- like, nothing but PTR for mm-hmm. weeks, like, just, you know, basically because I work on this website, and I had to get information for the website. I'd be, like, like 500 Paragon levels higher if I'd ever played, if I didn't work yeah. on this website, you know, because so much of my playtime has been testing on the PTR, and then it's like, oh, I'm, I'm now 300 Paragon levels lower than I was on the yeah. PTR. That's kind of Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's fun, but, but you, then at the end of the day, it gets wiped. So, But that, that would happen with all the QOL, QOL stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Like I would get used to it on the PTR, like all these cool new features, and then I, and I would go back, and once the PTR ended, I'd go back and play. It's like, wait, where are all the good features? What, what's wrong with this? Like I've gone back to yeah. a reversion level. One of the benefits of not playing PTR this time, it'll all be new and shiny. To exactly, be this branch are blue. That's that's fantastic. Finally, I don't know how many death price I've missed because uh, no, because oh. I've gone. Oh, after the seasonal merge, I've got like five hundred, fifty five hundred or something. It's like oh, that's good. Not going to do anything with them, but <laughs> well, anyway, you're not going to miss them this time around. That's that's a pretty, you know, talking about visual. That's actually a, a positive. Uh, um, visual cue, I think. A good one, I mean. And in like a month, people will be starting online petitions saying that you should out. Just, just give us auto pickup on Death's Breath. It's yeah. trouble. That would, 
Of course, we've been saying that already, but you know, they finally make them a, a visual color you can see, and uh, everybody yeah. just have to actually click them. I have to stop to click. This is <laughs> bullshit, dude. Things are just all into my lap automatically. I want, I want all icing, no cake. Uh, you. Any, so any other new patch features you're excited about? I mean, obviously there's other character balance things and, and larger, you know, kind of QOL changes. Any other specific stuff you're eager to get into uh, Friday? No, just uh, in general, I'm excited about like uh, it's going to be a power boost overall, and so I'm happy that there's, you know, at least Blizzard puts the uh, the win in your back. You know, even if you don't. Like if you spend the same amount of time playing, you're going to be doing a little better because everything's a little boosted. You know, the monsters have been nerfed or whatever. So, just feeling a little more powerful in this season. Like I'm, I'm actually looking forward to that, even if it's somehow just the natural results of the the changes that were made, not necessarily me getting better, but I feel that way. So, yeah, there's another big change about the hit points of monsters in party games, where they 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 scale up mm-hmm. much more so. With more players than mm-hmm. they used to, so it used to be they would they would decrease so much in hit points that we got it was actually much easier to kill each individual enemy on four players than it was on one player, and so they've made that less of right. the case now. So again, you know, less experience and a little mm-hmm. longer to kill stuff. All kind yeah. of adding into that, making. Uh, I, I'm I am curious to see how that stuff all plays out. I mean, it's hard to you know people have been testing this on the PTR, of course, but it's such an artificial environment where you're getting every yeah. item so quickly with the, buff, the drop rate buffs and people are playing like super high level mm-hmm. characters already. It'll be, I've, I often enjoy playing solo more than in groups a lot of times. Not so much the first, you know, first rush to 70, but afterwards. But you just were aware before you were at such a disadvantage for drop rates and yeah. experience especially. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got nothing to add. Well, except maybe like talking about features, there's one that uh, I think it's still missing. It's the I think I brought this up on the podcast before. That's my pet peeve. It's the one click build. I could really like a way to equip a character with like my farming build or my greater rift solo build or my greater rift group build, and I don't have to think about so where does that go and what uh, passes should I change and what gems should I equip and like it's it takes forever. It's not fun. Um, a one click build would be nice. If people have asked for specs like that mm-hmm. for you know forever, like since before the game even launched, we're like, why can't we just save two different versions? Mm-hmm. And you know, it was it, initially it was always everyone thinking we, we'll need this for PvP. <laughs> <laughs> I have that kind of lingering cough where you don't notice it until you start laughing, and then you just sort of go <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, like that. So stop making me laugh. Don't mention PvP ever again. But then, of course, PvP is not the, not the real challenge for that. But you know, just what you said, where you want to, if you want to regear, and especially now we're supposed to be using all exactly. these different sets, you know, and like like switching between them yeah. and playing different set dungeons. And hey, and and you know, you lose your goddamn legendary gems and some ring you take off, and you can't find it for five minutes. It's the worst. And it's just like this makes me so. Un- it's the worst. I'm pretty sure Wyatt <laughs>, laughs. You suffer, and Wyatt laughs. There'd be no chicken and But think about there. it, though. That, that would really be such a huge, huge quality of life improvement. It's, in, in my opinion, it's like the biggest one they could make to the game right now. Because there's, there's zero... Like a lot of... There's nothing, no tools for managing your inventory, your stash. Like, nothing. You can't even search on it. Uh, like, now they're displaying, like, the level of legendary gems. Thank you, something that should have been here from day one. Thanks, Blizzard. Got him whining. Um, but, yeah. Well, all those kind of changes take forever. I mean, you know, inventory changes and, like, you know, yeah. UI changes. You know, they didn't, they didn't, they, they hard locked all of the inventory stuff, all the UI stuff. They don't allow any player modding. Yeah. I'm like, wow, you know. And then it just takes forever to get these changes because the programmers who do that are like the BNET programmers, not the uh, Diablo 3 programmers. So it's all like it interacts with our whole database and everything, and so it's really complicated to do this. No, it, and that's fair. So it's just it's just why it doesn't work, you know. If it was if this was a on, like, like a single player offline game as well, there'd be mods that did this like mm-hmm. three and a half years ago. But of course, you couldn't use them on Battle.net, so it still wouldn't yeah. help you. But um, well, yeah, I think all it, it's not Diablo's problem. It's like all. Uh, games or ARPGs or whatever where you have a lot of items. It's like I've never seen a game really do a good job with inventory management. 
it's just like you th- you scroll through endless endless lists of items and and you know um, like there's so very few games that even have like a search function like just that like let us search like can I enter a few few letters and then maybe you take me there like very few games do that. And imagine if you had 25 or 40 or 50 <laughs> stash tabs in the album. <laughs> well, then maybe that would... See, they, they limit that, it for Maybe that bit. would uh, uh, motivate me to come up with uh, some kind of uh, system. I, I already kind of do. Like, you know, I, I changed the, the icon on the, on the tab. Like, I put, like, gems or... But yeah. even those are like, what do they even mean? Like, what relation do they have with the game outside of the uh, the character ones? Like, you have the man female version of each character class, but the other ones are, like, this I and this... I like the gavel. <laughs> I don't know what the gavel... What the gavel's is like it? an auction. It's just a bunch of, like, leftover clip art. What you know? is it? I want to know. But anyway, I, I, I kind of use them for that. It's always funny when games get, um, I don't say hacked, but like the MPQs get extracted and they find all the mm-hmm. unused artwork and stuff. Like you feel like a Diablo 1 or a Diablo 2 mod, they have all these different inventory icons and all these other armor and, and weapon icons you never saw in the, mm-hmm. in the actual games. Because they were done, but just never actually enabled. And so it's, it's almost like what that tab looks like when you, when you <laughs> right-click on your stash tab and all these just random you know, images pop up. There's like little swirls of gems, but yeah. like the gems in the game. I like, want to oh, know where, this crap. where these came from, like legitimately. Like, uh, how, what's the story here? Maybe we can ask one of the CMs. Maybe it was, uh, it's just like leftover yeah. artwork, you know? They yeah. said whatever. Throw them in. But I. And they should put it one. They should put in like um like Easter yeah. eggs in there, you know? Like put an icon of a necromancer. I guess there is one already because you meet that necromancer in the game yeah. a couple times, but. Like, put in, like, secret icon, like a purple Diablo. It's like, what's a purple Diablo? Like, oh, wow. Or like, like, put in, like, Andario. Hey, maybe some you know? people don't even know what we're talking about, because I found that feature, like, I, I right-click by mistake on, on the tab. So if you right-click on uh, your tab header, which shows, like, what a... Uh, when, when yeah, your when your stash is open. open. So usually it shows, what, like, uh, a chest or something? There's yeah, it's not just so. If you right click on it, you can actually choose to change the the little uh, icon. People still post all the time. I'll see someone post a screenshot like in a BNet thread, like, and they'll be some response. How did you exactly. get your tab icons yes. to different stuff? So a lot of people don't know about that, but yeah. So if you go there, marvel at the nonsensical graphical representation of your inventory. Okay, so last thing. We had almost no news this week because Blizzard's in hibernation preparing for the season. But uh, a former Blizzard employee, Dave Brevik, the uh, creator, co-creator of Diablo 1 and main programmer and, and game designer of Diablo 1 and Diablo 2, had, has left. He was working for uh, the Marvel superhero uh, MMORPG mm-hmm. for the last few years and had become CEO and was running everything and not doing any game programming. And for like the fourth time in his career, he's decried his rise to the top and says he just wants to make games again and wants to to, da- to downscale and just be a programmer and make games. So he has left that company and doesn't. He's not currently with any company. And like the next day in some other interview, he said, you know, someone asked him, "Have you thought about going back to Blizzard?" And he said, "Yeah, many times. I've considered going back to Blizzard multiple times since I left back in 2003." And basically, he just said in, in the interview we quoted on the, on the website that he doesn't want to live in right. Southern California. Which seems like kind of a superficial reason to not pursue your gaming design I dreams. I get that. I've been there. It's it's not great. Disneyland mm-hmm. too, or what? So you really hate <laughs> Disneyland? So you wouldn't go work at Blizzard because it's nearby, or I don't what? I think I'd like to go work for Blizzard. I'm not. It seems like a pretty intense. Would you work for Blizzard if you could stay where you live right mm-hmm. now? Cause that's that's what Dave wanted. He's like, can we hear yeah. about Blizzard North again? Because he lives in the Bay Area, which is like you know 300 miles. It's not like it's in the other side True. of the earth, you know. And it's much colder. Furthermore, these guys work... It's yeah, much nicer, actually. I much prefer the, the Northern mm-hmm. California weather. But these guys work in an air-conditioned, you know, fun land for like 12 hours a day, like seven days a week. Why do they even... Know? They could be working on Mars and they would know the difference 90% of the right. time. So I, I don't know. You want to do where you want to... I, like, except for that last part where he says he doesn't want to move. 
like the rest of that quote is pretty much please blizzard i would like to work on diablo 4 very much thank you like if that's not what it sounds like to you like i don't i don't know that's what i read into it well what he said was that he basically you know he said i'd like to i like to stay in san francisco and then he immediately said well you know blizzard doesn't want to have remote offices they only had that with blizzard north and he's like well that's that actually worked right. out pretty well of course you know ultimately it crashed and burned but but the irony being the reason the reason Dave Brevik left Blizzard North was, you know, one of the stated reasons was that he was sick of being a CEO mm-hmm. and running the company. So if they make a new Blizzard North, and who the hell's going to run it? You know, he's like, he's like, I want to be in charge of a new Blizzard North and just program. It's like, you were in charge of mm-hmm. Blizzard North ten years ago and you quit because you had to run it and couldn't do any programming. So how, how yeah. is this different now? What are you going to you going to bring in someone else to be the CEO yeah, and we'll just make the know. game? I don't know how it would work for him. I kind of think he's gotten used to being in charge of his companies, and he do what, does what he wants to do. And that's, of course, the whole reason he doesn't want to work in Irvine, because he wants to be in charge of his company and do what he wants to do without a lot mm-hmm. of oversight or you know, manipulation or whatever. But then, at the same time, he's like, I don't want to be a CEO again. It's like, well, so who's going to run the company and keep it the way, just the way you yeah. want it, if not you? He's like me. He wants the cake, and he wants to eat it, too. That's what Dave's do. You guys all just want <laughs> icing and no cake. No, but I... Like I, I see where it's coming from. And like maybe that's not, you know, it's a set of conditions that, like you got to choose two out of three. Like you can't have all three. But uh, it's, it was pretty much like Blizzard make me an offer, you know. I think otherwise he wouldn't have said any of that in an interview, don't you think? He's uh, okay. He likes to talk. He and, lot, he and like Max Schaefer and these other guys like not being under PR control and being able to just say what they want to say about other games and the industry in general, which is another thing you have to give up if you came back mm. to Blizzard. Yeah. But the funny part is, you know, there is a really well-known gaming company that makes really top games and, and gives the developers a lot of freedom and doesn't have a lot of interference, and the oversight is by other people who have done game programming. It's called Blizzard Entertainment. They're, they're located <laughs> in Irvine, California. So, you know, Brevik, just go work at Blizzard, let Morheim handle all the CEO stuff, let Metzen, you know, improve the plot, you know, make a plot, you know, you don't make plot in your games. And just, you know, you're not going to get a better, you know, situation than that. I mean, they didn't even, I mean, for God's sakes, you look out for viewing the art. I mean, Jay Wilson still has a job there, even after what Diablo Mm 3 initial launch was. We just had that big news like two weeks ago about how, you know, Titan was like an eight-year project that cost $100 billion, and then it went to nothing. They didn't even fire the guy who ran that. They let him run Overwatch and reuse the same game and you know remake it into something that looks like it'll be a big yeah, success. So I mean, that's... it seems like if if you can be a project lead at Blizzard, if you can't if you can't be happy being a project lead at Blizzard, I don't think you can be you can be happy being a project right. lead anywhere. But so it's not even clear what he wants to so, do because he doesn't want to. He says if you're gonna if you're gonna be a lead, you're, you're not gonna do any programming. Like that's not on any project of that scale. Yeah, that's one reason they call it work, is because you have to like do things you mm-hmm. don't want to do for money. That's kind of the huh. whole point in a job. It. Otherwise, it's a yeah. hobby, right? So, if you're going to run a massive project that someone's going to give you, you know, hundred million dollars to spend five years making a game, they're probably going to want to have a little bit of oversight, some like you know, have their input. Are you telling me that somewhere. you have not become a millionaire from DI.net? Uh, I have, but I took <laughs> it all on blow and hookers. <laughs> I get that reference. <laughs> Multiple times over and over again. I mostly just spend it on merchandise. You know how I always make fun of these guys who wait in line at BlizzCon uh-huh. for merch and stuff, and I say I don't do it? Uh, That's a you, lie. You that time. I'm actually sitting on a chair made entirely from Diablo 3 mouse. <laughs> Fantastic. If, if I shift my left ass cheek, I can, I can, I can left click and open a browser window. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, God. Oh, mouse no. wheel. oh shit. Okay. That was a little uncomfortable. you got to be careful right. which way you oh. shift. It's like it's like Game of Thrones, except mm-hmm. it's like Game of Pones. Okay, so would you like? I mean, I mean, I like Dave. I, I've met him numerous times at Blizzard North and at um, Hellgate, Hell, mm-hmm. Hellship, Flagship. I can't remember the game is called Flagship Studios. I mean, he's a really good designer. I, I talked to him a bunch. I did I did long interviews with him, kind of off the record for a, for a, a, a college project mm-hmm. back in the old days. And I think he's a really talented designer and stuff. But I have no real. I don't think he's, like, got a thousand, you know, he doesn't have, like, a dozen of, like, the most amazing ARPG ideas in the world just waiting in his head for Diablo 4 to unleash them upon us. No. 
I don't think there's any reason to think that if he was in, in charge of Diablo 4, it would suddenly be a vastly different or better or, you know, whatever. Obviously, he's got a lot more experience. Yeah. I've played a few hours of I think uh, it was Marvel. a mistake. It's, it's okay. All right. Yeah. I think Blizzard did make a mistake putting so many people on Diablo 3 who had never made an yeah. ARPG. Because they just did so much reinventing of the wheel and so much, you know, I mean, people, every fan in the world said, this item system sucks, you know, a year before hmm. launch. And they kept saying, we'll fix it, we'll fix it, and then it sucks yeah. for the first year after launch, yeah. you know. So, but, of course, the people running the game now, you know, Josh and Wyatt and, and all these other people in charge of stuff, have really learned on the job in, in the last few years. And if they're the ones who make Diablo 4, I have every confidence they would make a fantastic yeah, game right I from agree. the start. So I'm, I'm sure Dave Brevik would have some interesting stuff to add to that, and he probably would be a valuable member and maybe even a great you know team leader. But it's not like you know it's not like this is 2012 and we've got a, a launch with no end game or, or a terrible yeah. item system. You know, what was his uh, involvement with Diablo? Uh, was it Diablo one or Diablo two? He and the two Schaefer brothers uh, created Diablo one. Dave was the principal creator oh, okay. of Diablo one. So his, yeah. He did almost all the programming and most of the game design. It was his original idea. He named he okay. named it, etc. Yeah. And then he was the lead developer on Diablo 2. He and the Schaefers were the ones who really set the whole tone yeah, for Diablo 2. I'm I'm not sure that for most things, like not just video games, like it, like you can have an idea and then maybe people are going to take it to better places than you would have. You know, so he invented the genre, so thumbs up. Yeah. But I think other people have taken the genre to a pretty good place. So yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I trust the the people at Blizzard right now to uh, to make an awesome game. And Dave and the other initial guys were not the run ones who were running the Diablo two expansion or mm -hmm. the patches afterwards. And what most fans think of when they think of how cool Diablo 2 was, they think of things like rune words and all the different item, all the different legendary mm -hmm. items that came in. And all that stuff was done by people like Peter Hu and Tyler Thompson was the lead direct developer of Diablo 2 expansion. Basically all the people who, who came into Blizzard in you know, the late 90s and early you know, 2000s who worked on Diablo 2 all made, basically made the expansion while the head guys were off you know, working on Diablo 3 and other side projects that never saw the light <laughs> of day. Well, that was a little before Titan, but there were lots of other projects at Blizzard North in the old days that never mounted anything publicly. Yeah. Well, shown. like every company, I mean, they do research. Yeah. That was an insult to them or whatever, but I mean, it's like it's not like Diablo 2 expansion, everything that people think of, of why that game was great, it's not like, you know, Dave, um, Dave Revick, you know, dictated that in, in his sleep <laughs> like Mozart, you know. It was a collaborative project made by lots and lots of different people right. working for the company, so... Anyway, we've probably gone on long enough about that. Any uh, final thoughts for you, man? You just, just ready for just Friday? Just looking forward to Friday because I really haven't played in a long time, so I'm I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, getting back into it. But I, as I said, like I have some concerns I've, about like the end game and how all those sets and whatnot, how that's going to work in the long run. Do you know what class you're playing first? Have you got everything planned out for your initial rush to seventy? Have you planned your skills and you plan where you're going to play? You said you have your little spreadsheet of the best experience I'm not path. I'm going to use stuff. that, but it looks it's like when you reach level 14 and a half, do this, and then later switch to that and start crafting and blah, blah. So it's a little intense. I'm not sure I'm going to use it. But if you like min maxing, you can find that. It. It's Drek. Uh, I can post a link later. Yeah, and obviously you just want to play in yeah. a big group and, and do you know do things that are beneficial. Yeah. Explore. It's not like it was a few seasons ago where there were all these exploits. People were doing like you know you'd start mm -hmm. some bounty and then not actually finish it just to get the buff when the timer ran out. You've actually got to play the game. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was horrible. Hopefully that won't happen again. That was that was the first the first season where people were like level seventy in like two hours from exploit. Yeah. Maybe that's the downside of having a PTR is that I really think some people are finding those exploits but not reporting them, and then, you know, it, it comes out like a few days or a few weeks after the, the season has started and everyone gets up in arms. And so, like, you, you can't assure your cards with the PTR. You get feedback, but... Yeah, I'm sure we'll see some... But, of course, everyone can, you know, has plenty of time to catch up, ultimately. It's just, you know, if you're an hour or so, slower, slower to 70, it's not right. the end of the world, right? If you're a week behind... 
you said earlier you wanted to have fun playing video games, and that's kind of a, that's not really allowed with Diablo <laughs> three. It's all about it's all about like min maxing and crushing. There's also them. about shiny and pointless things showing up on the screen. Remember? Only as long as you're min right. maxing and crushing well, them. I would do my best. Okay, Dave. Well, Thank good luck you. on Friday night, and um, good luck uh, being brave with your hardcore <laughs> character. Oh wait, it's confusing me and with the seasonal auto. journey and stuff. We will be um, most likely doing a podcast on Sunday night after, you know, 48 hours of the season, and I'll be like, you know, Paragon 14, and everyone else on the show will be like Paragon 370, and that yep. you're heckling me probably, but we'll see how it goes. I'm looking forward just to actually playing the game. It's been so long since I've had time yeah, for any video that's, game that's stuff. That's awesome. I would play with you if you, you know, were playing softcore. If I have some sort of traumatic accident between before Friday and my testicles oh my are torn God. from my body, oh. then I can, oh, then I can go play softcore with you guys. Wow. Oh, snap. Shots fired. Pew, pew. Thank okay, you. man, thanks for your time. You've been listening to the Diablo 3 podcast. We are online at DiabloII.net, and with any luck by next week, I will be able to talk and not uh, cough horribly right. when I laugh. Or possibly my ovarian <laughs> cancer will get worse. I'll have to check Web- WebMD and find out. Move. Move. Move.